Two months ago, I made a video showing you guys a strategy you can use to win every game in Battles 2. And today we're gonna be using the same exact strategy to see if it still holds up in Battles 2's current state. So buckle your seatbelts, get out your pens and paper, because I expect every single one of you to learn something new in today's video. So let's get it. I just wanted to talk about this for a quick second. I saw this on the Battles 2 Reddit. Say the line, bull tricks. A defend is a defend. Do y'all like when I say that? I mean, hey, this meme and just seeing this made me so happy. So shout out to Long Classic 250 for posting this. This is awesome. All right, so we got the wonderful map star and we're gonna be starting off with the tax shooter here. And we ultimately wanna go for our hero, Agent Jericho, before round two starts here, okay? So after just one more income boost, we should be able to do that. And we're not gonna worry too much about the placement of him. We just want him down on the map. But it looks like our opponent, on the other hand, has the Dartling Gunner and also Highwayman Jericho as his hero. So he did go for Highwayman 2 before the start of round two. So he's gonna get his level three ability at the same time that we will. You definitely wanna prioritize going for a round one Highwayman or Agent Jericho. But we're ultimately gonna have to go for the Blade Shooter upgrade here. I thought maybe we could try to greed, but now he's heading space greens over top of those grouped reds. So. We're going to play that safe, and we'll go for our farm. That should be our next upgrade here, but we did force the powerful darts upgrade too over on his side, so that is good. He's back to sending group blues, so he might ultimately be using a pure eco strategy, which I guess I'm okay with. Let's go for this farm immediately, by the way. If you set down a banana farm before the start of a new round, you actually gain an extra banana from doing that, so... If possible, you, you definitely should try to do that. Now, if he sends us space pinks here, we'll probably have to go for the fast shooting, but since it's just group blues, we're actually chilling here. So no need to cross path just yet, but we'll most likely need to do that against round five space whites if he has to send those, or even grouped greens, honestly, which, yeah, he's probably going to send grouped greens. I I'm surprised to see that he has yet to use his level three ability, but let's go for that next farm upgrade. Maybe he didn't set down. Okay, never mind. Just used it right there. Here it comes at us with the Space Whites. Let's immediately just go for the even faster shooting. Okay? Kind of sucks, but it is what it is. We absolutely need that in order to defend. Again, even against these grouped greens here. But we're not going to be going for any more towers anytime soon. Although, again, he set down Highway Man Jericho at the start of round one. So that means the balloon adjustment will start kicking in here on round six. AKA, there's going to be some camo balloons. And we do not have the ability to pop those down. But... Since we really didn't leak too many lives, we can actually just straight up tank these lives here uh, to ultimately greet for our Banana Plantation upgrade. Now, if you happen to leak too many lives uh, during the earlier game rounds before the balloon adjustment kicks in, then I, I most likely would not uh, greet here. And I would just go for a Monkey Sense Wizard, target it to Camel Balloons too, so it pops those down specifically. But in this situation, I think we're okay to greet her, right? And if he sends us grouped yellows here, which he might not be able to send that many. He's been sending grouped greens for quite some time. I might have to burn a tower boost, but because we ultimately greeted for that banana plantation, I am okay with burning a tower boost, but let's go for that wizard just in case. Because uh, if we upgrade this to a fireball against grouped yellows, we'd be absolutely chilling. But okay, we're sinking. I don't know why the heck he did not send us any grouped yellows. Uh, I am definitely not complaining though. We're not going to go for another farm here though. I don't think that's going to be the play. Let's actually just go for fireball. Uh, monkey sense on this too as well. Let's target that to camo balloons too. Because these camo balloons bleeding within the AI is actually kind of bad for us because he's using a pure eco strategy from my understanding. I mean, he's been grouped ecoing during these earlier game rounds. So these camo balloons like not being popped immediately are actually stalling out these rounds for him, which of course is nice for him. Not necessarily nice for us. We're using an aggressive farm strategy. We want these rounds to end pretty much ASAP, but... Round 9 is here. I'm sending a crap ton of regen zebras. I'm going to balloon boost these as well. Just to scare him. He's in a tower boost. Oh my god, is he still dead? Dude, round 9 space regen zebras can be very, very deadly. But I think he's good. But he still leaked down really, really low. We're going to send a space lead here. Right at the start of round 10. Send that. Okay, because he doesn't have currently any lead detection. I'm going to go for the wall fire upgrade on that. We'll start trying to go for the necromancer here too as well. Oh, he went for an alchemist. Okay, that's not going to save him. That, that will save him for a little bit, but... Wait. Okay. We're good here. He's dead. I don't know what the heck... I, I swear to you, I was trying to use an ability, and it wasn't working, but... 
he, he had nowhere near enough money to go for the HRP, especially after sending that rush. So GG's. All right, so we're against, I think, the same exact player. And yeah, they have the Darling Gunner once again. That is absolutely fine with me. We just gotta make sure. Oh, I over would again. Oh my God. Okay, wait, did I over in the last game? I can't remember, but we just need to make sure that we go for round one Agent Jericho right here. Oh no. Okay, we're not gonna worry about the positioning once again. He was able to go for Highway Man. Fair play, well done with that. We're gonna continue on sending Space Deco here once a freak again. And hopefully we can make it a little bit later with this game. This guy just happened to be kind of aggressive. I mean, this is an aggressive strategy though. And the reason why it's such an aggressive strategy is because this strategy is insanely cheap. Like these upgrades are not expensive at all. I mean, a Blacher, a Taxer is one of the best early game towers. All you need pretty much is a 230. And you're absolutely fine all the way up until like round 10. Maybe not round 10, but you get what I mean. By the way, let's go for this farm here before the start of round four. Good, good, good. Notice how we're tanking lives and I'm still not going for the fastest shooting. Yes, it kind of sucks that we're leaking, but do I really need to spend the $150 on upgrading this? Not necessarily. And $150 actually goes a long way during these earlier game rounds. So that's why I'd rather put that money into my farm game because my farm game is ultimately gonna make me my money back, you know? And it's just my money making tower in general. So if I can, uh, I'd rather put money into that. Oh my God, I kind of forgot about level three right there. But thankfully we had enough money on hand. We had at least $200, round five is here. Now this is where I swallow my pride and just go for the even faster shooting upgrade on this, okay? And if he doesn't send any, eh, okay, let's just go for it anyway. We're gonna need it. And just like the last game, we didn't really leak too many lives during these earlier game rounds, so we should be able to tank uh, to these camo balloons. It just sucks again, because these rounds are going to be lasting now a little bit longer since I'm not gonna be popping technically all of the AI balloons immediately. But there we go with our next level three ability. And yeah, some of these camo balloons and stuff are getting through. Even some of these balloons just from these space blacks are somehow getting through. Not sure how that is happening, but it is what it is. Let's go for that banana plantation upgrade. He's most likely going to send us group yellows this time around, right? He didn't in the last game, which I, again, just don't understand. He could probably force a tower boost out of us, but wait, give, give me a second, actually. Give me a second because uh, your boy's out here freaking tanking last left and right, but we did ultimately great. Okay, finally, here comes the group yellows, uh, but as I was saying, I'm okay with tower boosting. If that means I can greet for 320 plantation. So, but it looks like now we gotta focus a little bit more on our defenses, okay? So, I'm not sure how I feel about this specific um, wall of fire spot, though, or necromancer spot. I usually have it where my tax shooter's at, but it is what it is. Round nine is here again, by the way. We're gonna do the same exact rush, okay? We're gonna balloon boost this as well. Let's use our level three ability and let's balloon boost that now. He's just gonna instantly tower boost. I think even with the tower boost, okay, he went for another one of those. Good. Good, good, good. He went for another powerful darts. That's exactly what we wanted there. We're going to completely stop Beko in here. We're going to send that lead balloon right to start of round 10. He's probably going to once again go for an alchemist, but we can actually go for a pretty early necromancer here. So we should be ready then for a round 11 rush, which I actually might sell this to send an even bigger rush. Oh my God. How is that? Okay. Okay. He's not going to like that. Oh, that sold that. That's fine. He doesn't have a tower boost. He's dead. Oh my god. The level 3 ability actually helped me out. It microed my freaking... The selling of the farm. So I had more money to send more purples right there. Wow. Okay. We're gonna go a little bit later in the next game. Trust. Alright. It's round 9 here in the next game. And this guy, I think, has already tower boosted twice. Which is not good for him. But I, I do want to go a little bit later with this game. Just to showcase this strategy a little bit more. He's going to use his level 3 ability against the Space Zebras here. I didn't even balloon boost these, by the way. He should be fine, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, but we're actually going to continue on sending these to see if we can actually get away with this. So this is kind of risky because we don't actually have enough money to go for the Necromancer just yet. Let's see if he rushes us, though. You can always sell this Banana Plantation in order to go for a Maelstrom. Okay, if it's a big enough Purple Rush. But it looks like we're good, so let's go for Necro. And round 12 is here, so let's get to send him Space freaking rainbows you always always want to capitalize on space rainbows on round 12 um I, I probably should have wall of fire here this would greatly help us out so yeah I, I might eventually go for that i don't know if he's not really showing any signs of aggression i might not uh but he's gonna equal with greens okay so he's not like max max equaling so he 
definitely could potentially be saving up money to send us a rush. He's still not ecoing. Or he's going to try to go for a supply drop. I'm honestly not too sure. Now, if he does go for a supply drop, that's honestly fine. Oh, wait. Let's go for wall fire here because of the AI leads. I don't like that. And group black balloons too. If we have wall fire for that, we'll defend much better. So I think this is worth it here. But throughout these mid-game rounds, yes, we're going to be max ecoing with group black balloons until about 1,500 eco. That's normally my eco goal. It depends on the map. But for a map like this and for the average map, I'd say my eco goal is definitely around 1500. So that will make us eco until about like the middle of round 17, probably. Again, it depends. But once we hit that, then we're going to full focus on our farm game. And notice too, we still only have a 320 farm. That is it. There's no really need to go for any more farms. Actually, too, by, by the way, we're going to hit 1500 eco even before the start of round 17. So we're making fantastic pace. But yeah, during the mid game rounds, all you need is this. Then hit that eco goal and then get to farm in. We're actually going to go probably for a 203 marketplace here because we'll eventually sell this into a banana research facility upgrade here. Okay. And we'll get that increase of sellback value if we go for a bottom path farm. We could also sell this, by the way, right here, which I'm going to do right now to replace it with instead an overdrive. Okay. Or an eventual overdrive. For now, a 203 tax bearer in case he wants to send us around 18 mob or around 17 mob. Sorry. Actually, wait. Let's go for this. We're not going to tower boost this, by the way, but we're going to take some lives. Because uh, I didn't have another tax shooter helping me out there. The Necromancer can't just solo dolo all by itself. But thankfully, we're in a pretty rich position to where we can just go for an early overdrive. Looks like he's still max decoing too. I could probably send him a rush since he's max decoing. So, yeah, let's send him a fortified map here. Let's see how he reacts to that. He doesn't really have enough defenses for fortified map. He's in the tower boost. Oh my god, that might be his third and final tower boost. Don't tell me he dies here. Okay, he's going to go for a crossbow. I think he's still dead. I could be wrong. Oh, he still used level three. He was fine. We could sell this into a BRF. A little bit late on that, but I was focusing on his side. And mm, okay, we'll let him be for now. All right. We got the BRF and we actually want to build up even more farms because at the start of round 20, there's only one singular AI Moab. So that means you get all of your bananas or all your money from your banana farms all at once. So... We just want to have as many farms then on the map as possible, which that means we can actually go for maybe another 203. I think so. Okay, there we go. Round 20 is here. Probably stole his cash a bit late, but that's all good. Look, look at our defenses. Still just a wizard and attack shooter. Granted, he hasn't been aggressive, but like you can get by with literally just this setup. It's absolutely crazy. Let's go for that uh, central market there. And we also should be good. Again, another advantage of having Agent Jericho look at his AI over on his side. Oh my god, that's freaking intense. Is he dead here? He's the level 3 ability. Is he dead? <laughs> it just forces so many upgrades, okay? And two, we just have so much money right now. So I think it is worth it for us to send a ZOMG here. He will have level 10 ability on Sentai Churchill. So that can pop off the ZOMG layer, BFBs, and even the Moab layers, but not the ceramics underneath. He's got the ninja, by the way, as well. Probably go for a sticky bomb. Yep, he did. Fair play, well done. I'm gonna go for another 203 central market here, by the way. We're ultimately trying to go for the Monkey Wall Street, okay? Which is $46,000. We can sell these two farms for around $30,000. So that means once we have around $16,000, we should be able to go for that, which, you know what? I'm gonna sell, sell, sell. I even sold a tax shooter right there to go for the Monkey Wall Street. Because we're gonna get $10,000 at the start of the round right here. Good, good, good. We can go for that overdrive once again. He tower boosted. Okay, I guess he had another tower boost. Is he able to defend? I think so. Yep, he was able to defend. So fair play. Well done with that. Whereas we, <laughs> we're just still chilling. Like he just refuses to be aggressive. Like I, I seriously don't understand it. But whatever, I guess. But we're in a great position. His eco game is not that good because he's still eco with group blacks. He definitely should have transitioned into pink eco by now, or maybe even zebra eco, if it could pull that off. But uh, we're gonna go for a BRF here, and now we could either sell this for $51,000 to go for B Central or keep this for a few rounds and then eventually sell it, maybe make enough money to save up to go for the B Central. So I'm not exactly sure what I honestly want to do. I'm thinking what we need to do actually though is save up money for DDT defenses because we really do not have the best DDT defenses as of right now okay so i'll probably end up just going for a good old prince of darkness only twenty four thousand dollars very cheap once again this strategy is incredibly cheap so 
Yeah, I won't go for the big baller Banana Central just yet. Should I pull off another Banana Research Facility? Probably not. Because I actually want these Moab class balloons to start spawning in right now. The graveyard ones, that is. Oh, God. Okay, wait. We might have to tower boost here if he sends one immediately. Because I still don't have it up. Just got it. Let's see. He could rush us. We're good. He, he is ready, by the way, for DDTs. He has sticky bonds and everything with five Shinobi tactic stacks on it already. That is crazy. So he's over defending like crazy. But again, his eco game is simply just not that good. So we have had the most minimal defenses pretty much this entire time. This has been just crazy. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to sell you into this now, finally, okay? This is how I personally farm. I'm honestly not sure if it's the way to go. But I just know B Central is cracked. And now we're going to spam BRF since the B-Central buffs those as well. And we're just going to be making tons and tons of money. But we do have to watch out for round 28 because he could all out us with fast cooldown DDT. So if he does plan on doing that, we should probably go for another wizard like right here. And this will be essentially our Archmage, okay? Which if we need to, we'll sell farms to go for and then we'll probably have the tower boost. But... This guy has yet to send us a single rush, probably because like he's using an all eco strategy, right? Most people, when they tend to not use farm strategies, banana farm strategies, they tend to not be as aggressive. So you can expect that out of most opponents. But if you see banana farms, then you probably should expect aggression, all right? But probably go for like maybe one more banana farm here, and then we'll send him probably just an unfortified BAD on round 30. Because um, he doesn't have the best defenses again. I probably haven't been keeping up with my level 3 ability, by the way. Which is definitely just a mistake on my behalf. So I apologize for that. But I'm going to start upgrading to an Arcane Spike right here, right now. Just to be safe here. We could also probably target the Wall of Fire to right there. And I think this is the best cross path, by the way. Because it does additional Moab Class Balloon damage. Unfortified BAD here on round 30. And let's see how he reacts. He could always counter. So we have to watch out for that. Uh, we could also go for more farms. And round 30 is another round where you get all your money from all your banana farms all at once. So you kind of want to go for as many farms as you possibly can. But like, don't overdo it. Because you got to make sure that you also can just defend against a potential counter DDT rush or something crazy like that, you know. But just one unfortified BED for now. Maybe actually, you know what, I'm going to go back on that. Since that unfortified BED has pushed so much, he just went for a Master Bomber. He doesn't really have good fortified BAD damage, so we're going to continue the pressure over on his side. He's going to use level 10 ability, which will affect the fortified mob, not the unfortified mob, making that push even more. Let's use our level 3 ability. I'm going to set in stone the Archmage here, by the way, because I just want to make sure that we are fine against a potential counter. Okay, and I'm going to slowly just start selling my farms here. We can also balloon boost. I have yet to balloon boost, which is another thing. Is he fine here? Does he have 10 times 10 Shinobi tactics stack on that? I think so. He doesn't have a single tower boost left, remember. Oh, he might be dead at the first one. No, he's good. And now we can just counter. We can just all out, I mean. Just show him that just show him we're all outing. And then I'm gonna go for some arcane spikes over on my side. We'll send even more. In case he wants to counter. Yep, tower boost. And boom. That's how you defend against the DDT counter. Okay, send one set of DDT just to be safe. Because without tower boost, that would have been scary. But we ended up securing the victory. Again, I hope you guys learned something new in today's video. I was trying to be more educational. But I'd have to say that this strategy definitely is still one of the top dogs currently in Battles 2. So if you're struggling to win in Battles 2, make sure to try this strategy out. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out this video where we use this insane strategy that makes the Super Monkey look bad. And that is not clickbait.